Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got what I'm calling a pop-up diamond fold card. Now this has happened by complete fluke because my intention was to make a diamond fold card so you can see one side of it here and then that would have been on the same side. Now I dropped the card and it kind of just, you know, creased and just didn't look very nice so I cut it off and this kind of appeared. So basically it would be flat in your envelope like so. So it fit in a six by six envelope, that's the back. And then when that person opens it, it will just naturally pop up. And it's just a really cool, you can see it's a really simple fold. And once I start doing it, you'll understand the diamond fold that I was originally going for. But by just cutting off that end piece, it's given me this completely different look. And if I hold it up, that's how it would look to the recipient and I just think it's really, really fun. You can't go too heavy with the decoration with this because obviously the heavier it gets, the more it's gonna fold down, but it will always want to pop up because you've got so much bulk here and the way the fold is done. Um, a tip is you need a good, strong card. Now the card that I use, which I swear by and use in most of my tutorials, is this one here, and this is 216 GSM, and this is the Paper Mania um, Assorted Colossal Colors Solid Card Stock. You get 75 sheets of all different colours and it's just it's brilliant. It matches so well with all your other maybe branded um, paper patch or pattern paper and I do, I share this one a lot in my blog. So yeah, you need a strong, good card because you don't want something that's thin, so like 160 GSM because if you start layering it up, it's going to create weight on that weaker card stock anyway and it's just going to flatten it. So make sure you've got a good, strong card stock and it will just happily sit there it will wobble around, but it will find that center point so it won't go crooked. I've just decorated it with this really, really fun stamp, which is part of a new collection that I've just purchased, which I will grab here. And it's by a company called Woodware, and it's the Clear Magic Singles. And this one says, nothing says happy birthday like a piece of folded card. And I just thought it just works so good with this. So again, once I let go of that, it really has got a spring to it. And then on the back, you've got plenty of room there to write your message. Um, yeah, really fun. So I've just put a single little diamante there on the bottom part. Again, if I put it up there, it would just create a little bit more weight. Everything is on foam adhesive. I've just got three layers there. And then I've also embossed some cardstock down the bottom there just to give it something a little bit more um, to look at and also some texture as well. So I'll put that to one side. So I've showed you that one there. You also get some other lovely other sayings. It's called It's, Lit it's the Little Things. I'll share all the links in my blogs. Um, in my blog even, but you've got, oh my god, you are another year older, you're not getting older, you're increasing in value, are you celebrating 29 again? Yeah, they're just, they're really, really fun little pun um, stamp sets there. So that's the card stock and the stamp I've shown you. So let me just grab that one there, what I'm using today, just pop that one there. So I've got my foam adhesive. I'm using these squares here. I'll go through the measurements. These are just my uh, stitched square um, uh, dies there. You'll need one piece of cardstock that's six by 12. Okay, so this is from that same paper pack that I just showed you, or card pack, sorry. Um, and I'll go through the scoring for that in a minute. The embossing folder I've used is this one here, which I got from the works. I wanna say it's a Santoro one, but I could be wrong. Um, I need to start labeling my embossing folders, but if anyone can remember the exact one, it's really nice and that's what I've used to emboss this little piece here. You can see that it's got really nice texture. Got my rulers there, put that to one side. This is the paper pack I've used again, the Fiesta Fever. You're gonna see me using this a fair amount of times now because I absolutely adore it. Um, and I am using, or have used this one here. So I'm using the same one on the next card just so I don't have any waste. And it's a really nice textured, you can see there the shine you get on it. It's got glitter through it, it's lovely. Okay, so that's the one I'm using there. Okay, so let's get into the video. So as I mentioned, you need a piece of cardstock that is six by 12. Um, where did I just put my, we'll use that one. So what you want to do is along the 12 inch side, you wanna first of all, bring that down a bit there, there we go. You're gonna score at three, but then you wanna flip it over and score at six. By doing that, it's gonna eliminate cracking because we're actually folding one way on one side and then we're folding the other way on the other side. Okay, so just make sure you flip it over and then that will stop you getting any cracking. So that's all you need to do with that piece. Then you're going to need to decorate. So the piece I'm using for this main decoration here on the front, this is a piece of four by four. Then 
these two stitched framelit squares. So out of my nest of framelits, I'm using the one that is, I mean, if it's three by three, that's fine. This is coming in at three and one eighth by three and one eighth. Then I've got the next size down, which has got my message on. I've already stamped that one. That one is two and seven eighths by, sorry, two and five eighths squared. So again, they're the, the whatever the next one is going down within your nest will fit nicely. You can see how that's going to sit there. Then I've die cut this one for the back, but realised I've actually die cut the wrong size. You want to die cut another one in the orange or even bigger in white cardstock to then stick on the back there. Okay. I've actually done the wrong one, but it's fine, doesn't matter. Then you want a piece of white cardstock that's two and a half inches squared, and that's going to create these triangles here, these white ones. Again, you might want to have a different colour. And then the piece that I've embossed is two and one eighth squared, and I'm going to cut those two in half, and again, that's then going to go on top here. Okay, so that's all you need, and it's really, it is pretty quick, this card. You can certainly just make the shell. You know, you could kind of, you know, do a ton of these in an afternoon and then just go along and stick all your, your decoration on. So we've done all the scoring. We don't need the scoreboard anymore. And let's just pop all those pieces over there. So now what you need is your ruler. I've got my T-square ruler as well. I was flipping between both. It doesn't matter if you don't have a T-squared ruler. And then my pencil. Again, I am losing everything again. Always do. Right, so... This is how we scored it, first one at three, then we flipped it over and we had the next one at six. The one that you scored at three, burnished down, so you've created a valley a mountain fold, and that's the correct way to fold that one. And then this one, you're gonna fold back, so you've created that. So what we have now is an M fold card, or a Z fold card, okay? So that's what we've got there. So now we should have these two score lines, so you've got the one sticking up and the one down. Now what we want to do is, we need to do a little few a few markings with our ruler. So starting from this central six inch score line that we've done, you want to come up along the side, just put a pencil mark at three, and then turn it so you're at the end, do another pencil mark at three, and then flip it again or rotate it even and do another one at three. Okay? And then along this six inch one, mark the halfway mark again, so three. So you should have three, 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 and three, all within that six by six square. So on this side here, nothing should be in pencil on the left-hand side, just all on the right. Then what you want to do is do some scoring. So we're going to score, first of all, we are going to score from this three-inch score line here, okay, to that middle three-inch marker. So, like so. And then you're going to do another one from that middle three inch mark down to that three inch score line. The first score line we've done. So again, that was the orientation. We've done three inches. You should have a score line going from the top to the middle of that six inch score line. And then the bottom of that three inch score line, again, up to the center of that six inch score line. Okay, see what we've got there? Then what you're going to do is again from that center one, you're then going to go out to that pencil mark that you've done on one side here, like so. So you can you can actually go right the way across, but I'll do it this way, like so. Okay, so now I've just gone again. From that center point on that six inch score line, you should have four score lines coming out to the three inch pencil marks you've done within that six by six section, and then just the top and the bottom of that three inch score line. Okay, you can just make out there that. What I'll do is I'll put a template on my blog, okay, just so that you can see. But it's pretty self-explanatory. You should be able to pick that one up pretty well. Um, like I said, you can just score right across from the top of that three-inch score line right over to the pencil mark that you would have done within this six-by-six six section, and again on the top of that one all the way down to the bottom of that one. You should have a nice big cross. Then what you want to do is from the pencil mark there, so the pencil mark that you've done on the outer side, you just want to draw a light pencil line because we're going to use that as a cut line, we're actually going to cut straight along that one, like so. Okay, so now you can see we've got this diamond shape in here. Half of it is scored and half of it is in pencil. That's what you should have just within that six inch main square. And then on this side, you can just see there, you should just have 
these score lines just go into that three inch score line and that piece there should just be plain. Okay, so now what we need to do is do some burnishing of our lines. So, because of the way we've scored them, you should just be able to fold them down. Again, you want to make sure it's a good quality cardstock because you've got a lot of pressure within that center point, but it will work. So I'm just folding all of my score lines down. Okay, so I've created this effect. Now you can imagine if I had this again doubled up on this side, that is your double diamond fold card. And I've done a smaller one, but I wanted to do a bigger one. But that's where it went wrong. And then obviously I had this. So now what you want to do is fold, hold on a minute, no, maybe I did do the folds differently. You can fold back in on yourself. It doesn't actually matter too much because once you've folded your score lines, one way it shouldn't crack anyway like so yeah okay so that's what you want to have so I folded them down okay from where we burnt from where we scored them and then fold that across like so then what you want to do is cut the um, let me grab my scissors and you're going to cut down the pencil mark you can rub out anything. I'm cutting my pencil mark right away just so I don't have to worry about rubbing it out. And again, totally remove that. Nice and neat. Keep them if you want. You might want to use them. And then that is now what you should have. And if that pops up, you can see what we're going to do now is pop glue on this half here so that sticks down and there's the card. Easy peasy. So can you see now where they were the, the crossed score lines that we done? That's our three inch score line, that's our six inch score line, crossed ones, and they were our pencil score lines, which we've now just cut down. Okay, so that kind of makes it a bit easier. Okay, so next, if you want to, you could put mats. If you don't want to make triangle mats, you could do, you know, mat and layer now while it's like this before you stick this piece on top. So once you stick that down, that's where I then get those triangle areas to stick the DSP and the, the kind of embossed piece that I've done here. I personally like it with the triangles, but there's no reason why you can't just do one big um, rectangle mat and layer. So now I'm just adding some wet glue. You can use double-sided tape if you want, but the wet glue will harden um, and just you know give a bit more strength to the base of your card. And then just pop that over. And I'm gonna use my bone folder and just go along and just make sure all my score lines are nice and that glue's all spread out. Like so. Then whilst you've got it here, you would stick your piece on the back here, but I need to die cut a bigger one, but you can, um, and if you want to stamp, obviously something else on there as well, and write your message before you stick it down. But you can still fill this out. It's quite easy to fill out even when it's all been made. Okay, so now, there is the card. I've got a little bit of Tombow that's come out there. I'm going to have to use my eraser on that in a minute because that will stay tacky, but that's fine. There we go. So I'm just getting something heavy just to stick on there for a minute while I stick down my pieces on the side. So these are the two, uh, the two and one eighth squared and the two and a half, I believe that one was. Yeah, two and a half and two and one eighth. So those two pieces, basically all you want to do, I'm just going to freehand cut this, but you want to cut it on an angle and go from point to point like so, so you get your two triangles, okay? And again, with this piece here, so I'm just gonna go from point to point, there we go. Tidy up some of those edges. Okay, and then all you're gonna do is pop one on top of the other, like so. All right, so get those two stuck down. So you want one that's facing that orientation and that's gonna stick in this side here, like so. And then this one, like that okay so get those all stuck down okay so that's that now all nice and stuck down then what I'm going to do is get this all layered up before I stick it down so I'm just using my um, little foam rectangle stickers here you don't have to put it on foam but I just thought it just brings something more to it so I have kept it I guess quite simple in terms of the decoration um, I think it's really all about the fold and the sentiment for me is is, is what it's all about so um, yeah obviously don't just my my tip is don't go too heavy because it will 
you know, just start to kind of dip and not pop up as high as you would like. Okay, so I'm going to stick that one nice and even. Put it in the centre there, like so. And then again, I'm going to pop some off of the foam on the back. And again, get that one all nicely lined up. I think I'll have more like that bit there, so I'm going to have that one a little bit more on show so again just make sure you get your point to points all nice and lined up and there we go then i've got some um let's just have a little look in here i wanted like a gold or an orange piece um, that gold one would be nice actually let's use this one here and i always like to pop a little bit of glue extra on mine just so that they definitely stay in place and I'm just popping one just to give it a little bit of bling it needed something you can stamp more things on this as well you could pop a few die cuts kind of nestled you could have some leaves or some flowers but again just don't go too heavy with it right and then this whole piece now can just stick I'm going to use wet glue so I've got a bit of wiggle room for it so Again, get my point. It's all lined up. And then what you can do is just go around and just check oh, that it all lines up nicely and give it a bit of a lift. But there you go. Just it kind of does just do what it wants to do and just stays in that position. And that's the card. Let me just bring that up. And you can see there, just me holding it, not touching it at all. Like I said, it will wobble like that, but it will find where it naturally wants to stand and it's got a really nice kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for profile and there you have it two really really fun just need to do the back of that one pop up diamond fold cards and I absolutely love them so I hope you've enjoyed this one it was a complete fluke that I made it <laughs> um, but sometimes they make the best cards I think so I can't wait to give these out I think they're gonna look really really fun and yeah hope you've enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel to see more thanks for watching bye